This is Ron Amidon. I'll be right back. Ed Walker here from Washington's Talk Radio, 980 WRC. Washington. We're back. Here, our phone number is uh, 882-WRC-1. It's seven minutes after nine. Temperature has risen a dramatic uh, from 49 to 56. What is that? Seven degrees? 56 degrees. I'll leave that to the weatherman. My old pal Willard is on the line. Willard, we've, we caught you. Edgy, Edgy. Hello, Edgy. <laughs> Man, are you a tough guy to track down. I, I tell you. I, I mean, I'm over around like a, as they say, a proverbial uh, wood salesman. I, I, it's incredible. I've, I've put more mileage in the last two or three weeks. We've only sold 12 copies of this book, so <laughs> well, they really sent, got me on the road hustling. There's 11 copies. They sent me a, a gratis copy. Oh, it was only 11. Yeah. Uh, uh, Great book. This is, uh, let's see, counting your cookbooks. What is this, about your fourth book? Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm a lecturer, raconteur, entertainer, movie maker, <laughs> czar, great lover. Now I've gotten into the book, but I don't do any of it. I got a guy that, you know, I speak into a tape recorder, and the guy helps me write the book, Dan Pazer. You've met Dan. Yeah, but he does, it, he does it in your style, and that's what the... neat kid. I mean, one of the nicest. I call him a kid. He's 28 years old. Dan... He's a kid. Listen, I say surround yourself with young people. They're the ones who'll take care of you. Let the old goats go, you know, as far as uh, <laughs> our, our generation. Uh, the people we hang around with, we're all complaining about our backs and knees and feet. You hang around with these young kids, they'll take care of you when you get old. That's right. That's this right. This kid is wonderful. I love Dan Willard like a son. And he and I really are two peas in a pod. We put this thing together. I, I'd tell him the stories, and then he'd put it in his own inevitable style, which he tried to make my inevitable style. But it's got, it's got some great people featured in the book, as you know. Well, I was flattered because uh, I'm in it, and I really am I'm very flattered about it. In fact, I think Dan called me and talked yeah. to me on the phone one day, and just to verify what you told him and get all the fine points, but uh, I appreciate that. Oh, listen, I love you. You know that. I'll never have my own book, so the best I can do is getting yours. Well, listen, I've written about you in every book I've done, so all you got to do is do like I do. Call Dan Pazer, give him $100, and send out all of my book uh, stories about you, and then you can have your own book. That's right. Uh, How did, by the way, you were signing books over in Wheaton the other day, the new Heck Company store, right? That was a love feast, study. I mean, I, I swear to you, everywhere I go anyway, I mean, I, and I've, I've been to about 900 hundred cities in the whole United States. I figured at one time uh, about every thousand square miles of the U.S. I've been at some corner of it, and uh, with the exception of maybe Alaska and Hawaii, although I've been to You've almost. been to Hawaii, haven't you? Well, yeah, I've been to, but I'm just saying that within every state I've been to almost within... Oh, like, I see, yeah. One thousand square miles of every of radius of every place that I've been, and everybody always, there's always one question, you know, the Q&A, that's the speaker's cop-out. Yeah. You have to do it in... I, I do that all the time. Oh, yeah, they pay you 50 bucks to come and <laughs> make a speech, and then you, 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 instead of saying anything, you know, profane or profound, you say, oh, well, today I thought it would be fun to have questions. And yeah. Always somebody asks about the Joy Boys. But, yeah, over in, so, in Silver Spring the other day, in Wheaton, we had the uh, uh, opening of the new Hex store, and they, they had me over there, and we were pushing the books. And I swear, Eddie, it was incredible, because first of all, it was like deja vu. When I was Bozo the Clown, I remember, I couldn't remember what year it was, but the guy got up and made a little announcement that the Wheaton Shopping Center opened in 1960. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving my old Jeep Bozo mobile oh, with yeah. the fridge on top. And I was Bozo, and I opened that uh, shopping center when it opened. And then to go over there on Thursday, and there must have been 5,000 people, and they were terrific because they were all our friends, Eddie. They were, in all honesty, they were they were Harden and Weaver fans, and they were Joy Boys fans. And that's something because I get calls now that we're doing talk over here, and not a day goes by that somebody doesn't call up and say, all right, go back to the Joy Boys show, you know. Oh, yeah, everybody, it's just sort of a point in time, and it was such a wonderful, uh, of all the shows that I, I know I can speak for you when I say that, too, of all the shows that I've ever done, uh, that show, the reason I think, well, we had fun, so yeah. much fun. And the, the other thing, from a professional standpoint, you should excuse the expression, it was our creation. It wasn't somebody's syndicated thing, hey, look, sweetheart, baby, here's the way you do it. <laughs> we, it was, you know, we did it our way. That's right. And it was our little world. And uh, I, 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 the truth is, as we proved, you know, we did that thing on the Today Show about four years ago. Yeah. We, we haven't lost it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> It was amazing, yeah. and uh, it's it's funny how you and people, you know, they create teams. Teams are in again, right? Uh, and yeah, right. Uh, yeah. it just seems as though uh, I mean they'll try to put two people together. And say, okay, you're a team, right? And it doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. And I, I get I get another plug in for for our friends at the other end of the, uh, the megahertz there. 
because uh, is it megahertz or kilohertz? Ki well, kilohertz. Kilohertz and AM. Yeah. But Harden and Weaver, I'm telling you, they have got that. I mean, the, the, uh, they are the El Supremo Timo, I think, probably in the whole country. I've never seen such loyalty, such fans. Uh, and you know, such a response to two people. They, people just love them. I mean, they, they, we had adoration and love, and, and we, yeah. Washington certainly gave us their all. But I mean to tell you, and these guys surviving. I, I wonder if people in the outside the radio business realize what an incredible accomplishment yeah. to survive so many years and be and continue right. to be as successful and popular as they are. And I, I love them to death. I mean, you, you know, I remember working with them. I was a page at the Translux building. And did you know I found out something the other day that I didn't know? You know why they call it the Blue and the Red Network? No, I never did know that. Eddie, I found out at, I was at WABC uh, in New York doing an interview for this book, which used to be what, WJZ? Yes, in the old days it was JZ. Yeah, I heard you. You were on with Owen Spann. I made three stations. Well, this was a, 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 a lovely young lady oh. on, uh, on the local station. Oh, I see. And I was with Owen, too. But, but I did this thing on the local station, and I kept doing the call letters, WJZ, and she said, that's not our issue. <laughs> I mean, these kids didn't even know. They didn't know. They, they didn't know. Used to, but get this. I was talking about the Red and the Blue Network, and there are people listening to you right now that don't know. NBC was, and ABC were both owned by RCA. Right. And one was called the Red Network. That was NBC. And the Blue Network was ABC. Yeah. But I never knew, and I kept, I made that say. I said I never could understand why they, you know, maybe she asked why it was one the red and one the blue. Some little kid who, again, turned out to be a Washington Bozo uh, Joy Boys fan, hmm. came running out from behind the rack. I know, I know. You know why? Because the patch cords that went in were blue for the ABC show. Uh, and the patch cords, so they wouldn't get them screwed. They wouldn't get them mixed up. <laughs> That's funny. That in, now add that to your book. You can do a whole That's book. That's wonderful, a yeah. Book, the Red and the Blue. I'll write a preface. We'll get Dan Stasner right. to write it. And we'll make a <laughs> lot of money, and I'll interview you in the Today Show. That's, the Red Network was the was the money-making network, and the Blue Network, as I remember, was the network where they would... It wasn't like... It wasn't like uh, public radio, but they had, you know, Walter Damrosch and the right. Metropolitan Opera. It was kind of the, if it were beer, it would be the, uh, what, the, the popular-priced beer. Yeah. NBC was the premium beer, and ABC was the popular-priced beer. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Willard. we got a friend of yours here. 882-WRC1 is our number. 882-WRC1. Let's see if you know who this. Say hello to Willard. This is Howard Devron. Oh, my gosh, the, the, the epithelio of the low-priced field. Where are you? No, the guy that used to always fall down and crossing your garden out there in the country. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I, I'm down in Florida right now, and be grateful that you're up there warm. It's cold. Yes, it's beautiful up here today. Howard played yeah. at Willard's daughter's wedding. Howard had a band down there, a bunch of Gene Goldcat rejects. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gene was there. <laughs> By the way... Teddy, Teddy said his regards to you down from heaven. I, oh, that, was she in Mexico? No, Teddy passed on. I was in Mexico, but Teddy passed on, but he sent his regards, I know. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't realize well, that. Well, that's right. He, he had a great time down there. And Willard, I don't have to tell you this, but every time that we look back at the thing in the dollhouse days... Oh, remember that? Uh, I never have forgotten the time that Buddy Robinson walked in there with both arms in a sling because he was promised to come over to play an accordion number. And he, he chickened out, and instead of that, he contributed $100 to the dollhouse. Oh, my. He's on Farnsworth and Reed. And the hottest thing that I think we ever booked was, was an NBC party, which was pretty dull because we brought in some people from New York. And every whenever you bring in the top execs from New York, everybody in Washington has to change their clothes about four times before the meeting because <laughs> they get so nervous. So we had this. It was a, really going to be a dull lunch. But remember, we got Tibor. Tibor Alfred. That's the one I told you about, Teddy. Oh, he's the one that passed. The one that passed. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I, I I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, it's a little tough to hear, and my, my ears are shot anyway. But he made the big time, though. Think about it. But that was the funniest bit. Because yeah. T-Boy dressed in a tuxedo, and here are all these kind of, and it really was, with all respect, it was a little stuffy. This lunch. <laughs> uh, and yeah. T-Boy comes in, and he 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 played. It was dressed in a tux, and he looked like a classic 1938 uh, band leader. That's, that's it exactly with the slick back black hair and. A little a pencil mustache. A little mustache, right. Every time anybody was introduced, Tibor would deadpan, would go up and play his violin, songs like uh, Fascination, and all these love songs, and it broke everybody up. Oh, that was a great idea. And would you do me a favor, Devron? 
Yeah. Would you cash the check for Mary's wedding? It's been four years. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got rid of it the first time I went to buy postage stamps. <laughs> that was <laughs> wonderful. Hey, Good to talk to you, Willard. Willard. Thank you, Ed, for Howard, you, hey, thanks for listening. Continued. Good luck. Take Bye-bye. care of yourself. Have fun, Howard. It's old Howard. We did have fun up in the old dollhouse in the lobby of uh, Nebraska Avenue. Yeah, I met another little fellow the other day. A little fella. He's bald-headed and getting pot-bellied. And he was, he was, remember, coming to the dollhouse in the lobby. That was more fun. I tell you, it's incredible. Everywhere it is. you go. Everywhere it is. you go. This is Old Home Week here, 882-WRC1. If you want to talk to Willard, here's another. Whoops. Wait, what line do I want? Hi. One of my fans. Yeah. Is it line two, uh, Ed? What line? Line three. Let's, let's try it again. Hi, you're on with Willard. Hi, am I on right now? Yes, you are on right now. Willard, this is Max Schindler. Eddie, how are you? Fine, Max. Max with the facts. What are you doing working on Saturday? Well, I guess uh, we'll go back to Bozo days. Yeah. You were a director. I must say Max was a, a director at Channel 4. Yeah, that was when Max the, was in the... Uh, in the peanut butter business yeah, on the Max, side. In Max the peanut butter business. Not t- in tight with the crowd at that time. So he was, uh, <laughs> you know, when they deport somebody, or he, he was relegated to do the Bozo show. <laughs> That's right. I remember, I guess, one of my uh, funniest recollections is when you had that big take on the local news at Channel 4. Right. And you tilted it up to show the camera. <laughs> I what remember was on that. The take. Tell the rest of it, Willard. Right, the fact that Jim Vance, I'll never forget Jim Vance, he fell on the floor along with the cake. The cake, we didn't know how stale it was. The cake was old. <laughs> it had been around a couple of days, and it, I guess it had been baked a week before that. And I just, and I did not do that on purpose. I tilted the cake up so that they could read the icing. They had the message of the promotion written in icing on the cake. And as I tilted it up, just as beautiful as you could, and it was all done with grace. It was like a, like a ballet. The cake just slowly started to slip out of the plate. And the camera person, I have forgotten who it was, that may have been your son, young Max, followed that cake as it hit right the to the floor. Oh, is there a tape? Is anybody pieces. anybody got a tape of that? I don't think so. <laughs> I wet really his did. pants and fell off of the of the seat. <laughs> oh Lord, Max! I remember one day uh, when Willard had his first hair piece. Willard, baby, you remember this? And uh, he hated to put the thing on because he had to use spirit gum. <laughs> and remember the old announcer's uh, office in the basement there yeah, on the brass yeah. Willard, uh, he would wait till the last minute, and he's putting this thing on, and the hairpiece ripped in two. Oh, my God. I you remember that? And oh, you put it together with scotch tape. Yeah, a little bit bigger part that day. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten. I'll tell you, Max, you'll appreciate, you know, Wes Harris, who runs NBC. Yes, uh, I do, yeah. I guess, what do they call it? O&O. He's vice president of the O&O stations. Yeah, the O&O operator the O&O stations. stations out in California. And Wes was our local program director during the Bozo days. And Wes, I mean, with all respect to Wes, he's a classic NBC executive. He doesn't, you know, he, he's stuck for an answer when you ask him his name. He doesn't want to commit himself. <laughs> and, and I remember I had a nervous attack one night. I, I really was ready to have a nervous breakdown. I was, I'd, I'd run myself ragged. And to be honest with you, the, the last days of the Bozo Show were just really almost painful because I was so tired. And I would start the Bozo Show, remember? That was the first job. And then we did the Joy Boys. Joy Boys, yes. And then I signed off the TV at 2 o'clock. That's right. It was a rough schedule. I'd run myself thin. I was exhausted. And I, I went in the men's room there at the announcer's office to put my makeup on, and I started to tremble, and my hands couldn't hold the red crayon, and, the, and it looked like, you know, I, I just, the, the lines were, were, oh, were and I, I, I knew, were not straight, and I knew I was in trouble, and I got on the phone, and I started to cry, and I called Wes Harris on the phone, I said, Wes, Wes, I said, I'm having, I'm having a nervous breakdown, I can't do the show, and there was a long pause, he says, we'll try, and <laughs> If I remember right, didn't you start doing the weather as a fill-in when Frank Forrester left? As a, I mean, originally weather was not your thing. I never gave it a thought. And Max, Frank, Frank right left, there. and WRC needed somebody yeah. to do the weather. He, and you said, oh, well, I'll, I think they asked you to fill in Well, he was on staff. He was paid as a staff announcer, and Joe Goodfellow said, I think it was Goodfellow, wasn't it, Willard? He just said, you do it. You're dead right. It didn't yeah. cost anything. The, the irony of the whole thing is... That, that one is I'd never, never, never thought about the weather other than the fact that I was doing it on radio and it was the first assignment I ever had in 53. When I went on staff, I started reading a five-minute radio weather show. And Joe Goodfellow, God rest his soul. You remember Joe? We, yeah. we always, Joe was not the biggest fan of the Joy Boy show. And I always felt a little persecuted because I didn't think Joe Goodfellow liked me. In fact, I just felt that Joe was, you know, not one of the, one of our supporters. 
Joe Goodfellow, rest his soul, was it was his insistence over Wes Harris. Wes said, Joe, you can't have Willard as your weatherman. Willard's supposed to the clown. Willard's a buffoon. Joe said, I won't use the language, but Joe <laughs> pounded the table and, and overrode Wes Harris. And if it hadn't been for Joe Goodfellow, I would never okay. have done the weather. I mean, the two people, I've got a Joe and a Bill in my life. Joe Goodfellow, who got me that job, Bill Jeff Small. Moore, and insisted, and Bill Small, and, uh, who, who was with CBS. And, and, and it just, uh, you know, you stop and think in, in, in your career or your job or whatever you want to call it. I mean, the, the things that happen to what serendipity or I call it dumb luck. I mean, yeah. just plain dumb luck. Because I never thought about that. As, and it's been the greatest thing that ever happened. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, listen, before I get off, let me tell you, you two had probably one of the greatest radio shows. I miss it. Thank you. And I'm glad you're you listening. Max Hyrus. Don't tell us you're yeah. jealous. I'm glad you're listening now, too. I appreciate it. Take care, guys. All right, thank, thank you. Max. You All know right. who's a big, you know who's a big Joy Boys fan too. Yeah. Always has been is is uh, is Tom Brokaw. Tom just uh, that's it, right. Tom has been a good friend, and Tom is a, he's a big Joy Boys fan. Isn't that something? Hang on here, we'll get back. I got to make some money, or else we're out of, out on the street. Willard Scott is my guest. <laughs> And WRC time here yeah, is uh, 9.26 in the morning. Willard is with us in Florida, where you got a rotten day, huh? You're a weatherman. You can't even get yourself decent weather down there. Well, officially representing the Florida Chamber of Commerce, it is a beautiful 80-degree, oh. absolutely perfect sunny day. <laughs> but just between you and me, it's a little cloudy and cold. Just like uh, the old Moran and Mac routine, boy, you must sleep well. You lie you easy. lie easily. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's not cold. It's, it's about 80, but... Uh, it's going to get up to 82 or 3, but it's uh, it's an easterly breeze, and it's, it's a little chilly. 80. It's pretty at home, huh? Oh, it's nice. It's going to go up to 70 today. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, but it's, it's, I know I was up there yesterday. My Lord, it, everything looks so pretty. This is my favorite time of the year. always has been. Oh, you yeah. going to a Halloween party? No, I'm going to take it easy. Probably have some uh, trick-or-treaters. Oh, I'm going, on a, I'm going to the Caribbean Monday. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, cruise. Oh, but which, which line? Uh, it's going on the uh, SS Rotterdam, which is Holland America. Yeah, it's, that's supposed to be <clears throat> uh, Discovery Travel and myself, we had a little thing. We're taking about 30 listeners. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and, that should uh, be a lovely trip. Where are you going to go? Going to, it's a 10-day cruise. We go to, uh, uh, let me see, Curacao, Grenada, uh, what's that, what's that other, Caracas, mm -hmm. St. Thomas, yeah. the Bahamas, and a few other, a couple other ports. I'm Where looking for... Where do you for, leave? From Baltimore? Fort Lauderdale. Oh, you come down here? Fly to Fort Lauderdale. That's right. the way I like it. I don't like that leaving in that cold water. Oh, yeah, but you'll leave Fort Lauderdale. That's that's a, that's a lovely trip. Yeah. I remember once Glenn Rinker took that trip. He loved it. Somebody said they saw Rinker on a commercial up here. Yeah, he's doing a commercial for, I think, is it Levitz? Or one of the yes, parts? Levitz, that's right. Yeah, I saw him the other day on that's the commercial, right. but he's down in Orlando. Is he? Yeah. I ought to try to call him. I have yeah. a little layover down here. Maybe I'll call him. Yeah. What if he's in the book? Uh, he's at the CBS television station. Is he? I'll check him out. I forgot which one that is. Let's, we gotta get, I could talk to you all day, but people want to talk to you here. Uh, 882-WRC1. Hello, Edith. Hi. Hi. How's everything? Fine. Willard's on. He hears you. Oh, bless his heart. I Can we have our cake at Edith, too? Yes, yeah, that's right. Well, let me tell you who I am, really. I'm Edith Brusseloff Dorfman. I think you know the name of Brusseloff. Leon Brusseloff. Absolutely. Well, he was my brother, and I am his sister, and I'm the only one left in the family. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, and it's just so wonderful to finally get through on with all this. And I remember Howard Devon on his accordion. Oh, yes. Oh, Howard is an institution. Yeah. yeah. Howard, yeah and Howard, he was, was a doll. Howard played on the Nina Penn and Santa Maria. That's how he got over here. He, somebody said he was one of the last guys off the Titanic. I don't yeah. know. That. He did the backstroke to New Brunswick. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Edith, thank you, hon. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 882. You know, I saw in Silver Spring the other day was Sid Zinn's cousin. And I, we, we talk about people we've loved over yeah. the years. Yeah, and Sid's mother just passed away. Right. She, and, and, you know, Sid, I think, predeceased her. That's right. Sid and, and she, Les. About 103. She was 103. Yeah. And Sid, remember, used to every day went over to see his mother. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Sid used to work for Columbia Pictures yep. uh, when we were uh, kids. And we became good friends, of course. And Sid was probably one of the best PR men in town. I, without question, we loved him. I did, a lot of people maybe just throw names out and like, you know. Oh, yeah. He are. was very good to us. 
He was very good to us. Hi, Jeff. You're on with Willard on WRC. Right. Willard Scott. This is Jeff Steele of the American University and the American National Red, Red Cross. Red Cross. So we used to do spots uh, for this yeah, guy. Je- how are you? I'm barely. How are you? <laughs> terrific, terrific. Listen, I gave it the office. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to do anything to track you down, right? Yeah. Listen, uh, Jeff, is, is this a job? You got a job for us, or is this just a social call? No, I just want to see if you guys were still both in the union. Yes, we're paid up. Oh, well, yeah, I got my dues. In fact, I'm a member of every union there is now. Great. What are you doing in Florida? You're too young to retire. I know. Listen, I I have a lovely little Marianne Bolo place down here a couple of years ago. I, I do some work for a place called South Seas Plantation, which I, I don't want to give a free plug to my client on the air. You know, I see. Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Well, now you can invite me down there to get this uh, lovely place to come to in the wintertime. It's only $1,200 a week in season. You'll love it. <laughs> I got four kids. You won't love it. <laughs> Truth is, he's opening a Popeye's franchise down there. Is that right? Good chicken. That's good I love chicken. it. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Hi. Good to hear from you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. 882 WRC1 for Willard. And uh, hi, Joan. Hi, dear. How are you? How are you? I enjoy your program. Thank you. And I just want to say hello to Willard. Hello, Joan. Hi, dear. How are you? I met you in over in Silver Spring. Oh, the other day? No, New Hampshire Avenue when my boy was three and you opened the co-op and you were playing bozo. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? We called ourselves the Beltway Bandits. Uh, we, no. We opened every shopping center back during the 50s and 60s. Well, the late... You know what I told you then? What's that? I re- I'm 61 now. I told you you're going far and doing things with that lovely personality and your lovely voice. Oh, you're so sweet. I appreciate uh, Paul is my boy, and he's 31 now, and he remembers you. <laughs> Isn't that, boy, does that make you feel that, old? That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Thank, listen, I'm glad that I'm still here to take the call and that I could hear you. <laughs> well, I know you're doing wonderful, and I go up past Della Plain because my folks live up near Goose Creek, and I love your place. Oh, yeah, that, isn't that pretty? That's that's my favorite place in the world. You should be there I've right seen, now. It must be gorgeous. I've seen almost every uh, continent in the world, except for the ones of the South Pole and North Pole, but I... There's no spot that I've ever found is, that is beautiful as Della Plain. The, the, the Piedmont of Virginia, I tell you, I weep when I think Isn't about it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Were you great. born there? I forget. I read your book, but I can't remember. Yep. Yeah. No, he was born? born. No, he wasn't born there. Oh. Yeah. You got to get the new book, Joan. Yeah, get What's the new, the new book? book. It's it's only, I think it's $16, but maybe Crown Book sells it for less. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Mr. Half says, books cost too much. Yeah. Oh, no, that guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Your mother's lovely. She's the prettiest thing. You look just like her. Well, thank you, Joan. Well, thank you, Joan. Take care, both of All right. You. Bye-bye. 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 Right, have you done it for the book signing in Washington, or are you going to get back down here at another store, maybe? I I think that's, uh, that's, that's it. That's it. It's that the publisher is uh, Doubleday, isn't it? Well, that's close. No. Nope. Not the big cigar. Simon and... Simon and Schuster. Simon and Schuster. Simon and Schuster. 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 <laughs> Simon and Schuster. I'm I, sorry. I... Let me tell you, I've worked with, the, with I'm not going to badmouth anybody. I've worked with some some of the biggest names in the publishing business, and there have been some of the greatest disappointments in my life. Simon & Schuster is the nicest company, and I'm, I'm not saying that because they've got right. the current book. They have been terrific. There's a, a young lady up in New York, and she happens to be cute. That has nothing to do with the fact that she's only 25 and beautiful. Uh, but uh, Ellen Archer... Well, there's nothing to do with it. Have you talked to Ellen? No. Because she's, she has been, I have never worked for anybody that's been more cooperative and helped set things up right. Because, you know, I'll tell you, for anybody that's ever done a book that's listening this morning, and there's probably some that are, and I mean some some people have done some pretty big books, it is one of the most exhausting, exasperating, and disappointing experiences. I mean, I remember one time I was in, in Albuquerque with 14,000 people at this convention where I was speaking, and I the book, The Joy of Living, was coming out on Monday. Yeah. This was Saturday and Sunday. Now, get this, 14,000 people. We know we'd have sold at least a minimum of 5,000 books. And they didn't the guy in the wholesale house held the books and would not release them. Oh. I mean, you're dealing with people like that that are... Oh, they're, man. They're, they're, I hate to say it, but they're, they're well... That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy as well. Right. Unfortunately, everybody that's ever done a book, you talk to, I mean, I love, I see Marion Burroughs all the time up in New York because she's with the New York Times and we're friends up there because we knew each other in mm-hmm. California. And you, she's done a couple of books. You talk to anybody that's done a book, it, they, everybody's got their own horror story. They have the, the publishing people have got to get their act together because it, it's in coordination with distribution, I think is where the problem is. But Simon & Schuster has, they've delivered on everything that they've, you know. That's great. But there's nothing like going all over the place. You, you, you travel, you know, 1,800 miles to do something, and there's no books there. And that drives you crazy. 
Yeah, Carly Simon is a member of that family, of the Simon and Schuster family. I never realized Yeah, that. she's a niece or something of one of the Simons, I believe, or I, I don't know the total thing. I'm just curious about how many, have you got your million mile flying certificate or something? You must have flown over a million miles in the last few years. I, I figured it out one day, and I, I do about 2,000 a week. Oh, boy. So, but whatever that comes to, but you know, I've got, I've got three or four of those miles, obviously. I bet you get a free trip pretty soon. Yeah, to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> 882 WRC1. If you want to talk to Willard, Hal, you're on with uh, Willard here. Hello, Hal. Good morning. Hi. It sure is a pleasure to be talking to the Joy Boy. Well, speak up loud and clear so he can hear you. Right. Uh, I saw Willard in the flesh one time. There's he plenty was... of flesh to see. Oh. Right. And more every day. <laughs> <laughs> he was promoting a, uh, an apartment development out in, I think, Montgomery County somewhere. Right. And he was passing out frisbees, and my kids played with those fris that frisbee for years. <laughs> and I have a request. Yes. Anything. I'd like you two to sing your theme song on the Joy Boy Show. Oh, hey. what well, acapella? Hey, well, uh, acapella. Daddy's the only one that can sing. Mm. He made, you sang the harmony, didn't you? I mean, you sang about four times. You uh, I did on one version. The closing version was me overdubbing. The opening version was us, the two of us, just singing. In unison, we are the joy boys of radio. We chase electrons to and fro. That's it. Yeah. Well, let's mm -hmm. I always travel with my accompaniment. Oh, we gotta get, we get the man his request. All right, one, two, two. one, two, three. We, we are, are the joy boys of radio. We chase electrons to and fro. We are the joy boys of radio. We chase electrons to and fro. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well, you're welcome back to DC Radio anytime. Well, All right. That would make a buzzard sick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the call. Okay. 882 WRC1 for Willard. Just as we sang, I looked out on a piling, and a seagull just did a nasty. Oh, really? Yes. Well, he heard us sing. I have a message for the seagull. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it. He may get romantic. <laughs> I don't. I can't handle it at this hour. <laughs> let's uh, let's sell something. We'll be back. If you want to talk to Willard? Eight eight two WRC one. Twenty before ten o'clock. Boy, time goes by in a hurry when you're talking to Willard, whose book is uh, "America Is My Neighborhood." Uh, we ought to at least talk a little bit about the book here. Let me get uh, Carl's been waiting forever here. Let me get. Let Carl. me say, well, I'm a little depressed, buddy. Oh, why? Well, I've heard three clusters of commercials, yeah. and I haven't heard Carol James yet. I mean, was that him doing the wolf on the on that car commercial? Well, you figured him out. You figured him out. I was on one. You didn't even mention that. I, I was on the people. I heard you. I heard you do people. I know. Reba so, Crane hired me for that. Who did? Reba. Oh, Re I, oh my Lord. Reba, she, you could have gotten me for half the price, Reba. <laughs> Carl, you're on WRC with Willard. Willard? Hello, Carl. This is Carl from Bethesda. Fantastic. I want to know whether you knew my uncle. He worked for WRC Radio for over 30 years. He was chief controlman, and his name was Frank Fugazi. Frank Fugazi is Good Lord. one of the finest men, I think, and his lovely wife, one of the finest men I've ever known in my life. And I, I talked to him not, well, it's been two or three years ago. He was down in Tampa, wasn't near St. Pete. He's down in Florida, and I haven't seen him or heard from him since he, you know, retired down he's there. Still, and what relation are you to him, Carl? Well, he's my mother's uh, brother. Ask him, ask him next time you talk to him if he remembers that when I was at American University, he and another guy up at NBC, Joe Zabo, right. built a transmitter for our campus radio station. I wouldn't doubt it. Tell him that Ed Walker asked about him. Oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked to Frank about two years ago. In fact, a lot of times when I do go to these different places, you know, I'll, I'll run into, uh, like, George Brewington. I saw him down to Orlando, and I've seen different people around, you know, when I hit the... saw Bernie Pizzuoli the other day over at Hex. Bernie, to have his lunchbox with him? Yeah, Bernie was still getting <laughs> apple cider. It, it, it just... <laughs> wonderful the, but the folks you know we had the nicest family oh yeah it's hard to imagine because unfortunately the broadcasting business like a lot of other things i mean we change they change everything changes but we did have the nicest family the, it's like uh, that here too willard i gotta tell you yeah, well that's, that's very that, nice here you can't buy that that's money in the bank yeah and it's very nice and all i talked to old art page 
Now, the day's living down on the bay now. I'm Got... so glad because he loves... Yes. I don't think anybody in the world loved the water at his four-wheel drive more yep. than Art Page, and I'm so glad he finally got that. Got a boat, and he's having a great time. Well, Carl, thank you for calling. Sure, thank And you. Tell, tell Frank we said hi. I will. Okay. Frank Fugazi, Frank Fugazi is... He was one of the... He was one of the first people that ever really introduced me to good Italian food. Oh, yeah, he was a good cook, wasn't he? He and his yeah. wife are two of the finest cooks, and Frank is a real, honest-to-goodness connoisseur of wine. I mean, he is a master of yeah. the wine and a good, you know, table wine. Not, not, nothing abusive. That's, I think, one of the thing when I think about a Frank Fugazi in this world, he is the epitome of what we like to think of as moderation. If everybody in the world could have a glass of wine like Frank and just that's it with his meal and a glass of water, always had a glass of water and a glass of wine. Uh -huh. And he'd take a sip of one and then a sip of the other. But the Frank is just a fine, fine That's got to tell you something. He's still going strong. Well, I knew that, as I said, yeah. a couple of... I, I talked to uh, to him about two years ago. Uh, yeah, I forgot what I was going to tell you about... Uh, well, anyway, let's go that's to... the let's... first thing to go, Eddie. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or second, anyway. Ed, you're on, you're on it's WRC. A tight, it's a tight, tight <laughs> squeeze. <laughs> you're on with Willard. Hi, uh, this is Ed from Bethesda. Yes, Ed. Been a fan of both of yours since we moved down here in 1941. We came from New England. Uh-huh. Mr. Ed... And it was Mr. Ed? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> not quite, old friend. The, uh, I don't, I don't, the saddle is not on me yet. <laughs> um, but we came down from New England. And when you fellas started to sing the Joy Boys song, it was kind of deja vu. Oh, really? Yeah, how about that? How about the original Joy Boys in Boston? Well, see, we, if you tell us that, it's the first I've ever heard of it. Yeah, now, really? yeah, I, who were the original Joy Boys? I'll be darned. Well, I'll, now you've got me on a research there, job. There was certainly no plagiarism. The first team, none, 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 the none. first team on radio were the Happiness Boys, which was uh, Billy Jones and Ernie Hare, and they were out of New York. But yeah. Now, who was, was there a team? Damn, but there was a, there were people yeah. in, New, in New England, I thought, singing the Joy Boys. There talk. was a team on all night on WBZ. In fact, we were talking about it with uh, Ken Ken Melgren, our program director. Two guys named Jerry and Sky. Uh-huh. Well, is, right. is that who you're thinking it about? It sound like it, yeah. Well, they were on all night on WBZ. Uh-huh. Well, you know, the, the first theme song that we ever had on radio, we did steal from, I, wasn't it that team in Chicago? Yeah, Bob Arbogast. It was the Sicilian Tarantella. By Henry Rene. Yep, and we did steal that one. But the, you, you're working on something, uh, Ed, because... We are the Joy Boys. We did not originate. Uh -huh. We heard it from some people here in Washington. Used to go to Capital. What is it? Right? Pre-I Capital Radio Engineering Institute. They used to sing it there. But somebody somewhere down the line told us that they thought there was a team somewhere up north. Yeah, maybe. How nebulous can I be? But we never found out. I never heard. No. Yeah. Well, I, I think you guys are a generation after them. Uh, I think that's about right. Yeah, they, were, they must have been singing in the twenties and thirties. Well, yeah, we, I don't think you guys were. Well, we did our singing in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and other people do other things when they hear us. <laughs> Ed, thank you very much. Nice to chat with you. Good luck. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hey, are you into dirty radio yet? I mean, Dr no, no, we're pretty clean here. I find that more and more as I go around the country. Is that back again? I mean, there was a time when they had uh, sex talk and... The Howard Stearns of broadcasting. No, no, we don't do that here. We don't do that. No. Oh, God, it's too bad. Well, <laughs> okay. you get ratings that I way. I was on with a guy, too. I was on with a guy in New England the other morning, and it was funny. It was dirty, but it was funny. Uh, he had taken an interview that I'd done with somebody, and uh, he did his own questions to him. Oh, yes. And it had to do with my honeymoon night. And I, oh. I mean, I guess it would offend a lot of people, but I swear I fell off the floor. Who was the guy? Isn't that awful? He was up in... Uh, mm, Eddie, that's terrible. Wow. It, was, it was last Thursday, and he... Uh, He's a young fella. I can't remember his name right off the bat. I've got it written down up in the office. Remember when we used to get those things from uh, for promoting movies? They were called open-end interviews. And uh -huh. we used to do that on a Joy Boy show. We'd make up different questions. Yeah. We'd have Doris Day and... Uh, or we'd... Yeah, I'm up next. Oh, yes, you're on. Oh, I punched him up and he's there now. Mel? No, yeah. Go on, you're on, with, you're on WRC. Mel from Silver Spring. Yes, sir. Oh, well. I want to say that, hey, Willard uh, and Ed, you make my day. Uh, Ed, I catch you on PBS uh, on the connections every now and then. Yeah, 4.30 in the morning. Well, I'm up sometimes at 4.30, and I, uh, I listen to that, and I often wonder, do you, as Willard would say, you have a bicycle, you get from one place to another so fast? Well, I know that connection show we tape uh, in the week time, and it's sent out and run at various times. They just have an AMU happens to carry it in prime time, 4.30 a.m. Well, anyway, after, uh, <laughs> after 
about 4.30 or 5 or so, uh, I, I pick you up uh, in the morning, Ed, and, uh, and then I got to leave time for Willard because I just love that uh, Jane Pauley, Brian Gumbo, Willard. And uh, I think they're terrific. Hey, Willard, it's Jane's, today is Jane's birthday. That's right. She's a Halloween baby. I'm looking at the, my birthday list. Jane yeah. Polly is 37 today. Yep, this she's is, just uh, a baby. My wife's birthday, too. I wish you guys would say happy birthday, Florence. Hey, All right. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Florence. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. I got, I got a question um, uh, to ask of, uh, bra uh, of you, uh, Ed and, uh, and Willard. Yes, sir. Um, I came into this area about 40 years ago, and uh, Arthur Godfrey at that time was uh, doing his lot, Nick the Furrier, Ed. Do you remember those? Sure do. Do you guys have any um, uh, unusual experience with Arthur interacting with him? No, we, uh, I only met Arthur Godfrey once. And Willard, you, you met him, didn't I met you? Him, I met him this, uh, one time at a different place. I met him up at the Horse Show in Upperville. And I met him and Goldie at the same time. Yeah. But you had, didn't you? Yeah, I had him on television. Yeah. Uh, and he was, I must say, it was in the later years of his life and was, wasn't in a very good humor when he came in because he was staying at, I don't even know what hotel, but he couldn't get breakfast. And he came in, he says, son of a gun, you stay in these hotels here. Did he really say son of a gun? No, but we're on the air, so I don't... <laughs> And he was, you know, he was moaning and so forth. And as soon, soon as the camera went on, good morning, how are you, how are you? <laughs> you know, he was, he was right there. Yeah. Oh, he, he was our idol, and uh, yeah. I know I, I've, I, to this day, I still, uh, like you, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mel, I, I used to listen to Metro Yellow Tag, was it Yellow Tag Poultry? Yeah. He sold that Yellow Tag Poultry, and... I'd listened to him on the radio, and I loved him so much, and, and I really idolized him, and, and ac actually, he was my role model. Yeah, he was everybody. He was the first guy to do informal radio. Well, you, you remember the time he was selling first for Zlotnik, and he inadvertently said something like... Potatoes. 40 potatoes? Yep. Something uh, like that. Yep. And Zlotnik had to sell those... Uh, that that's right. For the potatoes. Got, he got more publicity out of that than anything. Th that's right. That bear it? is in storage someplace in Baltimore, I think. Yeah. I'd like to buy that. Bear. I would, too. Yeah. I, you know what I'm looking for? And uh, uh, they're very expensive now, but the original Little Nippers. Yeah. You remember that they had one in the music library? Remember that thing, that plaster of Paris? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, those things cost a lot of money now. Well, I, 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 one of the few things that I saved, I do have one. You do them. have one? But the, you can get them. You can get the... Uh, they've got... I, got them. I mean, I can get you one up... They do sell them at the company store up in New York, and they did it. Yeah, but they're but they're they're replicas. They're not the original. All right, then the one I have is a replica too. I'm well, you might. I tell you what, I do have. I have on a stand in my basement one of those old '77 microphones that we used to use. Yeah, I was uh, I was lucky enough. I got a '44 and a '77. Yeah, I do too. And I'm trying to put a little uh, museum like together for myself memorabilia. Yeah. Place. And I, yes. I have another question. Uh, I came into the Washington area in the '40s or so. And uh, I was uh, rooming on a, on a yacht down in the Potomac, believe it or not. Uh, and one of the, uh, one of the uh, persons who, who owned that yacht was a personality, a radio personality. Her name was Marshall Adams. I wonder if that name means anything to you guys. No. Uh, she used to do a talk show well, back in the 40s and uh, uh, interviewing uh, celebrities who came to Washington and so forth. Did she use that name on the air? Yeah, so you know where she broadcast from? Where the Translux used to be up well, there was on... A, uh, you sure it wasn't Mary Mason? Mary Mason? Mary Mason was the lady who was on uh, WRC back in the 40s. Well, I, I knew her as Marshall Adams. She was an old Powers yeah. model and... Uh, she Maybe. Listen, Ed, i got to move along here. Okay, yeah, thanks right. so much. Best of luck to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Bye-bye. She, she could have been... Was she the one that was like the forerunner of Nancy Osgood? Yeah, Mary Mason was before Nancy Osgood and Patty Cavan. Did you... Are we ready for a break or something? Yeah, we're going to take a little quickie here. I, then... got, I got one. I want to tell you a story that you know, but it, it happened on WWDC if, <laughs> this time of the year a few years ago. If you go, I, I just happened to think about it when he talked about... About, uh, about the turkey? About, yeah, about the turkey. Oh, yeah. About the funniest story. Oh, yeah, i got to tell. we got to clean it up to tell yeah. it on the air, I, although it went on the air. I remember that. I was. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Don't forget it. I'm on with Willard, and uh, this is uh, 882 WRC1 is our number. Eight minutes until 10, Washington's Talk Radio 980 WRC. <laughs> And WRC time, uh, four minutes before uh, 10 o'clock. I don't have a whole lot of time, but Willard Scott is with me. Monroe, you've been waiting. Go ahead. Good morning. I'm listening to you guys and enjoying. How are you, Willard? Hey, good morning, Monroe. How are you? Fine. 
I'm visiting down in Potomac. My daughter lives down here with her family. All right, uh, we're not far nice from place. Great Falls. Beautiful country. Yes, Isn't it is. Pretty? Yes, Very it is. Nice. My hometown is Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Bay Ridge. All right. You know, you know, you know uh, Jesus delicatessen in Brooklyn? <laughs> All the delis. And, but I watch you every morning uh, on NBC TV. Thank and you. you. have a great show. Uh, uh, one day I'd like to see... Uh, NBC smarten up and uh, give you your own show. Uh, hey, I'll drink to that. They might. <laughs> Thank you, Monroe. I got a cue more. I want to try to get in before the end of the hour. Okay, okay. listen. Best wishes. Uh, I love radio the most. Uh, Thank you. The so most, do we. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Hi, Ruth. You're on with Willard. Ruthie. Hi. Well, Real quick. Willard. Hey, Ruth. The, yes, today is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday and to I, you. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear Ruthie. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. And <clears throat> listen, I'm 67 today. A baby. And I'm hoping that you will still be on when I get to be 100 so you can wish me a happy 100th birthday. <laughs> well, that, that's, that ain't that far away for both of us. Okay. I'm still working. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lou. Oh, yeah. Is that Lou, you're on with Willard. Oh, hi there, Ed. All right, real Lou, quick. Lou and Chevy Chase, I just want to tell uh, uh, Willard something that you already know. Uh, I made a barbershop quartet arrangement of the uh, uh, Joy, Joy, Joy Boy, Boy song. Yeah. Well, that's, I've and never heard that, Eddie. for you at the Ground Hall Gamble. That's right. Uh, at the, this is Lou Sims. I know him. At yeah. The, yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear that, Lou. You've got to get your guys to record that, Lou. Well, maybe we should. Get the Federal City Four to record that and yeah. send it to us. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? It'd be wonderful. A, we'll put that on the beat yeah. side of a Madonna record. How's That's that? right. <laughs> Lou, thank you. i got to run. We're about out of time. Okay, but Ed, appreciate nice to talk with you and Will. All right, good thank luck you. at the harvest next week. Thank yeah, next, next uh, Saturday night. That's right. Isn't next that, week is their harvest of harmony. Isn't work. that some how, how quickly time flies? Yeah. Boy, this, this hour is going by real quick, and I thank you. I know you're trying to get some rest, and I appreciate it. No, this is more fun than, you know. And the book, uh, America is My Neighborhood. Is Wonderful book. Simon & Schuster, buy two copies. Get three or four. Yeah. And how much? Just give them to each other. What are you going to charge me to autograph it? I'll tell you something. <laughs> for you, $1.40, <laughs> initials 50 cents. <laughs> okay, listen, I appreciate it. And, and that's uh, fun. It was really fun. Uh, let's try to get together uh, over the holidays, at least. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we've been between now and Christmas. And yeah, yeah. Uh, come on down. I bought a new lawnmower, and I'm going to go see if it works. It's a Toro, so I'm sure it'll work. All right. If it doesn't, we'll tell them about it on the air, and we'll get a new one. That's good. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot, Willard. Okay, see you later. All right, take it easy, Bubby. All right, bye bye. bye, -bye. Turkey brings it into the station in a little cage. And he, he threw around <laughs> some cracked corn. <laughs> There's corn everywhere. There were some sound effects turntables in that studio that Al Ross, the morning man, used to uh -huh. use. The turkey proceeded to hop up on the turntable and commit an indiscretion. <laughs> <laughs> and Willard's remark was, now we know what the turkey thinks of the morning show. So. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, yeah. the ending of it is... Thank you. Years later, when they removed that studio and they broke that, <laughs> partitioned off that room, they took out those turntables and they were still corn back in the corner from that turkey. So that was my experience <laughs> with a live turkey. Hi, I'm Ed Walker. And I'm Woodard Scott. And we're here to celebrate Leisure World's 25th silver anniversary of the Golden Year. That's right, Willard. Almost 7,000 happy residents will be whoopty doing it throughout the year, celebrating the country's most successful senior community. We are the Joy Boys of Radio. Ah, the Joy Boys. That's we when radio was grand. And speaking of grand, Leisure World is grand opening phase two of Fairways North. Brand new condominium homes priced for a song. Oh, solo me. Oh. Priced from the 120s. With grand views and grand plans at a grand value, this truly is a grand opening. Available for immediate occupancy. But hurry, they're selling like hotcakes. Ain't that grand? Look, Eddie tells it like it is. Get your gorgeous pods up to Leisure World. Right on Georgia Avenue in Silver Spring. Phone 301-598-2500. It'll keep you young till you're 100, at least. An equal housing opportunity. Oh, gee. I'd I, forgotten that one. A couple of years ago, uh, there was a you, it was this radio station under a different format, uh -huh. uh, and there was a little game that was played with listeners on the oh, air. Oh, yeah, the uh, name that tune. Yeah, now this is not really uh, a mistake so much as just a funny phone call, but uh, let's listen to this one. Yeah, we're going to play you two notes from a song. 
If you can tell me what the song is supposed to be, you win $98. Oh, my God. Oh, now you just hang on. We'll play you the notes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we are. No! Oh. Mom, you idiot. <laughs> hey, that's a terrible way to talk to your mom. <laughs> oh, my God, I uh, forgot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tell you what we're going to send you, Jim. We're, oh, my God. So we're going to send you a uh, AAA uh, travel kit. This contains everything. I'm going to Europe. No, this is just a travel kit. Oh, oh, no, I'm going to Europe. Oh, you're going to Europe. Okay, it's got toothpaste in there, soap to wash your mouth out for talking to your mother like that, and all sorts of good stuff. Okay, so we'll send that out in the mail to you. Well, thanks. Okay, have a good trip to Europe. All right, you bye, too. You, bye-bye. I'm not going to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it was something, that guy. I forgot. Oh, Mom, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple of months ago, in fact, it was uh, in the merry month of May on this program, we were doing a commercial for People's Drug Store. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> and it, it necessitated reading a little tag at the end. And the way they have it written on the page for us, for those that uh, are not aware of it, it says there's usually a, a sentence or two, and then they'll list maybe 12 or 20 store locations, and the copy says, where you're supposed to read the store location, it says, in parenthesis, pick one location from below. Yeah. And here's how you tag the spot. <laughs> this drug, the convenience you want, the savings you deserve. And just a reminder that People's Drug knows that sometimes prescriptions can't wait, and now People's has 11 all-night drug stores in the area, including... One of them at, um, Pick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stupid. You're going to love this, Bruce. <laughs> it's one of these parentheticals. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> Pick any. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what the heck that was. <laughs> In... <laughs> <laughs> oh, on Christmas, say Merry Christmas. On New Year's, say Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> There's one people's drugstore open all night at 7939 New Hampshire oh, yeah. Avenue in Langley Park. That's smooth. <laughs> oh. oh, Lord help me. <laughs> oh. 617 is the WRC Talk Radio time. One more for oh, you one here. More. That's not enough. Huh? And this okay. is actually uh, Balmer Benny was recording a little Christmas song. And apparently it didn't go down on the first take. Oh, no. And here's how it sounded in the studio. Is this all right? Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. His dry leaves before the wall hurricane flew. Uh, I lost my place. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Benny, I'm like, oh, Benny. Poor Benny got frustrated. Oh, so, oh Benny, I was surprised. <laughs> oh. Well, there are just a couple of the uh, highlights <laughs> of the last Well, you're going to get you. We're going to work on one for you now. I'll bet. Oh, boy. I'll bet. Oh, I am too easy. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> All right. Well, inside the Beltway, Shirley Highway is a lot better than it is outside the Beltway. All lanes are open. 14th Street Bridge <laughs> is not a problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> All right, laughing boy. That's a uh, look at the uh, oh. traffic here for this. Yeah, we got you later, too. Uh, this minutes after... Six o'clock. Dr. Gabe will be uh, on the radio this evening between six and seven, talking about something that's near and dear to all of us, acne. Yeah. And he said there's no reason for any of us to have pimples these days. If you know, get a little zit stick and you're all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Once you get the giggles, you just it's can't lose them. Minutes after six o'clock, taking Here's a look Howell, at the weather. <laughs> Well, the, uh, always your day you guys are making it rough on me. You know that, don't you? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, if you're going to the beaches this weekend, look at the re resort areas today. Partly sunny, high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Just keep going, kid. Don't stop. And for tomorrow, considerable cloudiness with a chance of rain. And so it goes. That was a year ago. That was yeah. about a year ago. You made a I know it. Yes. <laughs> we all do that right. from time to time. It sounded like Jody. Well, those, 
<laughs> that was Jody. <laughs> so there you have our bloopers for today. Good. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some more that we'll add to our collection by next week. I hope so. It's 621 WRC Talk Radio Times. This is the morning show. Ed Walker, my guest for today, is John Hickman. Laugh tonight with Jack Benny on the... <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they used to do a thing on Christmas Eve I, I used to love, and they'd put sleigh bells in yeah. the chimes, and they'd say, this is NBC, the night before Christmas, which was always neat. And in just a minute, John, we're going we're gonna to get in touch with Willard, who was uh, my partner for many, many years at WRC, and uh, a staff announcer, and I'm sure he'll have some interesting things to say. The Joy Boy. Yes. That's, that's a... what killed radio. Thank you. That's Bryson Rash. <laughs> Keep your opinion yourself, know. Bryson. <laughs> Joy Boys happen to Washington tonight. That was our jingle, yes. When the boss goes home and is out of Sixty fifth anniversary of WRC, and uh, we got a guy who's been with the station most of that time. I do believe started out as before his voice changed. Willard, what am I doing here, Scott? Hey, unless that's all part of the game of life. How come you dumped me for that young kid with the zits? <laughs> that's Bruce, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, here we were. We had a beautiful marriage for 22 years, and you you dumped me for a younger guy. Well, uh, you know how that goes. <laughs> I'm a swinging guy, and he was ready for it. Apparently, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> like you said, Bruce, that's great. I I broke him in. I trained him good, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Have you ever gotten him to pick up a check yet? <laughs> no, I was going to ask you about that. As a well, matter of fact, why should I? Some things never change. That's right. <laughs> now, you're one of those people that started out at NBC as a, the, the page. They used to have the famous NBC pages, right? Right, yeah. And uh, what, when did you start? I started September 16, 1950. That was a great moment in my career. And let's see, what was I in 1950? I was uh, 16 years old. Mm. And I got a work permit. Eleanor Ferguson was in personnel, a sweet, beautiful woman. I went over to the Epiphany Church on G Street and said a prayer and asked for the job. And by golly, uh, somebody was listening, and I got it. But I was one of the youngest pages they ever hired because you, you had to drive. That's part of the job. And, and uh, I didn't have a driver's license. had a learner's permit mm -hmm. back in those days. And anyway, it was a beautiful relationship. As you know, Eddie, uh, uh, that's the only ambition I've really ever had in life. In fact, it's the only shot that I ever called that I got. Everything else, like meeting you was divine grace, uh, meeting my wife was divine grace. Uh, every show that I've ever auditioned for, I've bombed out on. Every pilot that I've ever done in recent times or before, especially the last four or five years, I've done pilots for different companies for television shows, and they've all bombed out. Nothing I've ever done has worked, except I got the job at NBC. It was a goal I set out, and of course, all the good things came from that. I never wanted to or thought about being a weatherman, never cared about that, never thought about being a clown. And those two things, Bozo, Ronald, the weatherman, yeah. led to the Today Show, which has been really and truly the greatest part of my career outside of working with you, and I mean that. It's a different thing. The relationship we had was very special because of our personal relationship, but as far as ex expanding and going out into the world, this has been unbelievable. You know, we need to get you guys together again. You think so? I think so. Well, maybe. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Incidentally, there's a nice article about Willard in the August Reader's Digest. And there was an article just before I went away in the journal here about Willard. Uh, you might want to read that. And we're chatting with him now here on the morning show. It's 716, 76 degrees at Talk Radio 980 WRC. Willard Scott, WRC. I'll tell you a story I don't know if I've ever told you, that Carlton Smith, who was the manager of WRC at that time, when you went in the Navy, right. and I took over the old Twilight Tune show in the afternoon, I sat in Carlton Smith's office, and he said, Eddie, I want to tell you something. He said, Willard Scott has one of the rare abilities in broadcasting to come on the radio and sound as though he were sitting right in your living room. 
And he paused, and he said, sometimes this is an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they still feel that way. <laughs> you know, I think I was there the last time you two guys were uh, sitting in the same studio for a broadcast together, and wasn't that uh, when NBC sold the radio station to Greater Media? Were you at yeah. RC that time? Yeah, he was doing traffic. Oh, my God. In fact, I was sitting there as a traffic reporter, and... After about 40 minutes, I hadn't gotten up from my chair. I started a traffic report, and you said, how does this guy know what's going on? He hadn't left the darn room <laughs> <Yeah>. in 40 minutes. <laughs> Anything changed much over the years, Willard? Oh, Eddie's gotten a little older. Uh, I seem to ma hmm. maintain my youth, but Eddie gets to be, uh, you know, he's got to be a mature <laughs> citizen. That's right. I don't, you know, the truth is, it, uh, Bruce, if anybody were to ask me as you just did, no. Uh, Everything is so good and so wonderful. I'm, I'm 54, which is not ancient, but I mean, let's, I, I'll be honest with you. It's the time is creeping up, and it's been 37 years that uh, I've been in the broadcasting business. And it, that, that's a chunk of, chunk of time. Remember that Stuart Hamlin song, Old Father Time is a Pick in My Pocket? That's right. Happy Time is Pick. I was doing a thing this morning with the McDonald's Jazz Band, which incidentally is fabulous. I knew all about the McDonald's marching band. I've worked with them, but the, I did, the McDonald's high school jazz band is fabulous. And I was, I wanted to do a rain dance here in Atlanta. Uh -huh. you know, I'm talking to you from Atlanta this, this, uh, this particular session. And uh, I asked one of the kids in the band, the electric piano player, I said, can you give me a little bit of raindrops that are falling on my head? And he looks at me. He said, what? <laughs> and I said, you know, da, 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 da. And he looked at me. And I realized, my gosh, Raindrops are falling on me. That was one of the top. I mean, that's a big song. That wasn't even that long ago. 25 years. This kid was about 14. He'd never heard of it. Holy cow. One of the trumpet players, he he, he went into it. He was a, 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 a mature 15-year-old. <laughs> somebody, somebody like the kid is just the Beatles. Oh, yeah, that was that was the first group that Paul McCartney was in before Wings. That's right. <laughs> I tell you, when you run it, that and Bozo Buddies. When I went into a nursing home, and one of the patients was a bozo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's got to tell you something. I, uh, listen, I should get out, because I've had a good time. It's been, you know, I'm way ahead of the game now. But, you know, we never give up. We, we keep going until they throw us out or burn down our house or whatever they do to suddenly tell us they want us to get out. Well. But it's been terrific. And I love that station very, very much. And that never, never, have, uh, never have I known a, a, a sweeter peace. Never have I known more contentment, more personal satisfaction than, than working there. I'll tell you that. I've, I've done a lot of other things and, and some really nice things. But that, you know, it's like home. It's like 125 Commonwealth Avenue. That's there'll, right. There'll never be another, another 125 Commonwealth Avenue, Alexandria, Virginia. Well, we're listening to a lot of the old memories, and John Hickman will be is with us this morning on uh, the anniversary. And I know uh, we go back a long way, too. Well, John was about 16 when he came in and started working for us. That's right. John's about 82 then. That's right. So you know how old we are. <laughs> well, we can, all, we can all sit around and, you know, we'll make, I think the next lotto game should be with Medicaid cards. We'll all of us get together. <laughs> we'll... <laughs> now, wait a second. I don't qualify yeah, yet. See, this kid's too young. That's right. He's, still, he's still got acne on his That's face. That's what I said. We'll, we'll hose him down. We'll, we'll get him straight down. That's all right. Working with Eddie, I'm getting older by the minute. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Well, just go home and take a shower every day, Bruce. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Willard, great to talk to you. Hey, nice to talk to you. Okay. And I'll, I'll talk to you later if I still have a job. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you, Willard. the joy boys of radio we chase electrons to and fro we are the joy boys of radio we chase electrons to and fro ah they're playing our song hurry hurry it's a circus billboard march and of course doing that show with willard was always a three-ring circus for sure and there you have some memories from willard scott we figured that the station management was out uh, dinner or doing other things and that nobody was listening. And many times uh, I could say I'm glad they weren't. Yeah, that's right. We had, had a lot of fun. Had people a lot of fun. brought us food. That's why we're so fat today. And, and we had all kinds. Well, anyway, here's one a... of my favorite stories. And we ought to tell this. I mean, just to show you the power the Joy Boys on Friday nights used to have. I think this happened to uh, Lou Martin, the late Lou Martin. He was listening to something you all were doing coming home from work at T.O.P. 
And he was laughing so hard, he ran off the road and had an accident. <laughs> that's, that's the... <laughs> well, let's go back and uh, relive one of, those, uh, one of those moments. And here's a typical Joy Boys interview, if you will. You Ladies and gentlemen, it's and come to our attention that here. many of you people listening to our come program are interested in antiques. You have to be or you wouldn't be listening to us. And actually, we have found a kindly old lady, well, Grandma Worthington, who has an antique shop in Georgetown. Willard Scott is escorting... Grandma Worthington to the to be around here. microphone <laughs> right now. Grandma Worthington. <coughs> here, have a drink of water there. It's a, indeed a great pleasure for us to welcome you to our program. How do you do, Mr. Walker? How are Walker you? is mm -hmm. the name, yes. And Welcome. we'd like to talk to you just a little bit about some of your wonderful antiques. How do you like this here. old pewter mug I have? Do you like this? I, I think it's a very charming mug there, uh, Grandma. That looks and here's one you drink out of. Uh, uh, how old would you say that is? Well, this one, um, let's see the bottom. I'd say about 1715. Oh, that's way back before George Washington. That's right. This was used, I understand, by Governor Dinwiddle of Virginia. Oh, is that he right? He was the third I royal governor. I didn't realize that. Well, I didn't either. I just made that up. Oh, how much but is that's the, the way we antiques do. Uh, see, <laughs> so you sort of make it sound, uh, how much do you charge for that? This this mug right here, uh -huh, yeah. three hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred. Well, it's real pewter. Yeah, I mean, I it see. ain't one of them phony. No, all right. Things. Now over here, I noticed it has something that looks to be an old grandfather's clock. That's an old grandfather's clock, I think. Mm -hmm. how, how old would you say that is? About a year and a half. I got it down oh. Sears about a year and a half ago. Yes. For yourself, huh? Oh yes, I wouldn't pass <laughs> oh, this I off. I see. Oh, I see. Uh, now the mold is just sloppy housekeeping. Oh, on the I side see. There. Over here, you have some other interesting little. Mm -hmm. uh, See this crystal in China? This was brought over from England back uh, oh. before the War of 1812. That is very lovely. You know, when the English burnt the White House and the Capitol, that's awful mean nothing, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, it certainly I don't was. have nothing, I have nothing to do with to that do crystal, with but I just thought you'd be interested in Well, what's in behind this door here, Grandpa? Oh, no, 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 don't touch that door. No, no, oh. no. no. Uh, <coughs> don't right. touch the door. Why? Uh, I mean, uh, what's back there? <laughs> well, uh, if you must know, you know, when old Granny goes out and gets her antiques, we have to refinish them, don't oh, you? Oh, you have to do a little work on them. That's right, mm -hmm. and get them in shape to sell them. And hey, back in that room, I've got all my old antiques that I haven't worked on yet. Yeah, people haven't seen these <laughs> haven't yet. Haven't seen them yet. They're not no. even labeled. Or, not uh, even labeled. They're all fresh and real authentic. And uh, you know, I'm sure that our audience would like to hear about those. Oh, if you don't no, mind, please. I'm just going to open no, the door do here, that. Granny. And, no, uh, oh, no, for heaven's sake. Oh, 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 oh
Yeah, that's right. That was before WJSV. Yeah. WJSV was the Ku Klux Klan outfit then. <laughs> that's oh, right. Alexandria, wasn't it? Oh, was the okay. train was. Was and WMAL used to be the Columbia outlet. That's right. And then CBS bought JSV. Remember old Elder Michaud used to yeah, say, Willingly you. Jesus suffered for victory. <laughs> happy am I in my religion. <laughs> and then, God, he was a wonderful guy. Then we went to WMAL. The NBC bought it as the blue outlet. We used to have red and blue networks. And I was sent over here to MAL when we were on 9th Street, I believe, at the MA Lease Optical mm -hmm. Company. That's where it started. And they said, look, you're the only fellow we got around here that can run the dials and, the, and put records on and talk at the same time. Get over there in the morning and see what you can do. And that's how we started the Breakfast Club. I'll be darned. You were, the, as I said earlier, you wrote the book. You were the first guy that I know of to inject personality into radio. And you know how that program succeeded and why it did? Because I tried to get off of it by lousing it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hated the idea of We do a lot of that morning. around here. I hear you were a tough guy to get up in the morning. Oh, it was know. awful. And I hated getting up, so I, what I did was deliberately mess up the show, hoping that they'd throw me off of it <laughs> and put me on something else. But after about a week of it, the boss called me in one day and he says, hey, I don't know what you're doing. It's too early for me to watch or listen, rather. But whatever it is, keep it up. It's being talked about all over town. <laughs> you got a friend of yours on the phone here, Arthur, from... He's now in Hagerstown, Maryland, managing a television station. Are you there, Arch? Yes, Brad, I'm here. Hey, we can't can hardly hear, hear him? you. I can't. We can hardly hear you. I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, well, I can hear you faintly. We got a little trouble up in the control room anyway. All right. Uh, you guys got any suggestions? Anything we can do I'll to bring... I'll give him my interrupt. Yeah, that might help. Interrupt. That's interrupt. That's your interrupt. Hear you. Care a little bit better. Okay. Hello, Arch. You got a hot ear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Arch. We're getting, we're getting. Our, this is Arch McDonald Jr. Arch. Hey. Hi, Arthur. Hello, Arch. How are you? You look great. You never ate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I do. It's, uh, it's just some of the fish I've been eating that does it. Oh. Arthur, I saw Eddie Walker last weekend at a party. He mentioned you were going to be on the show. He asked me about some of the funny things that happened in early radio in Washington. And I remember very well a story about you and my father, the stretch you used to pull on each other. And do you remember the story about the records with the off-center holes? Ooh, do I remember. <laughs> it was bad enough that I sing. And he took the daggone record and punched a hole in it off-center and put it on, so it went... <laughs> oh, he fixed me good, especially when I had a new release out. I used to wonder why the records didn't sell in Washington. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. His tell daddy was a wonderful did. guy. Tell him what you did in retaliation. Oh, boy, do you remember that? Sure. <clears throat> Arch used to do the ball games, and he did it off the wire. He was very clever at it. The, the reports came on the wire, and he would sit there and take the tapes and read the reports in such a manner that you thought he was actually at the game. See? Now, I read the Morse code because I used to be a telegrapher. <laughs> and I'd hear that stuff coming over, and I knew what the score was long before he said so. Mm. But nobody else knew that I could read it. So when I was with my friends, I'd say, I bet you a dollar he strikes out. See, I already knew he did. <laughs> <laughs> I used to pick up more bucks. But then I found out about Archon as playing those records, which he did late at night in a show that I turned over to him called The, 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 the Moon Dial. Moon Dial. Yeah. And, uh, he, uh, he, I got on the air one day while he was doing the ball game, and there, whenever he came to a letter, a word with the letter S in it, I went <laughs> in an open mic somewhere in another studio. See, I had an engineer open it up, and I'd go, you know, while he was on the air. 